Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. It's one of those crazy stories I find it hard to believe. Mark Phillips sent it to me. It's from TheGuardian.com. And um, <laughs> I'll tell you right now, this is the fourth time I've tried recording it. First two, I had trouble with some words. Third and fourth times are technical issues. <laughs> Who knows? This video might never see the light of day. It might be cursed. But French woman spends three years trying to prove she's not dead. You think that'd be easier to prove? But apparently not, especially not in France with the bureaucracy over there. Jean Pouchen has not existed in the eyes of France's officials since 2017. And I contacted my good friend JP, friend of the show, who uh, is a native French speaker. And I said, I have a problem because I'm going to be doing a story involving France and a lot of French names and so on, in particular Pouchen. I need to make sure I say it correctly. And, and he gave me a pronunciation guide. And so I think I'm close on that. But I'll simply refer to her by her last name from now on as Pouchen. In the flesh, she appears very much alive and well, but convincing the French authorities of this, another problem altogether. <laughs> she is declared dead by a court, but not a court that was actually convened just regarding whether or not she's alive or dead. It seemed to have been almost a tangential matter. But once you're declared dead in a court, apparently in France, it can be difficult to convince French authorities otherwise. She was declared dead by a court. She's now spent three years trying to have herself officially declared alive. She's 58 years old. She's from a town near Lyon. She has not existed in the eyes of France's administration since 2017 because of a long-running legal dispute involving a former employee at her cleaning company. So this goes back to another legal issue she had. Now, she told journalists recently, I went to see a lawyer who told me it would be quickly resolved as I'd been to my doctor who certified I was, in fact, alive. But because there had been a legal ruling, this was not enough. So she actually went to a doctor and said, can I get a note saying I'm alive? <laughs> Seems like an unusual lawyer's note, but you know. Her lawyer was also astonished at her greatly exaggerated death. It's a crazy story. I couldn't believe it. I never thought that a judge would declare someone dead without a certificate. But the plaintiff claimed that Pouchen was dead without providing any proof, and everyone believed that person. Nobody checked. So the decision by the Court of Appeal in Lyon that declared her no more came in November 2017 after more than a decade of legal battles with a disgruntled former employee. And there are several references in here to the Monty Python skit involving the dead parrot, but also we're reminded of the Holy Grail. I'm not dead yet. So uh, what happened was a 2004 industrial tribunal had ordered Pouchan to pay the former member of her staff um, about 14,000 euros in damages. And now that was after she'd been let go from her job that Pouchan's firm had lost a major contract over. So in other words, this person was an employee of Pouchan's company. That's what started all this. As the case was against the company and not Pouchan personally, the ruling had not been enforced. In 2009, the employee sued again, but the case was then thrown out of court. So it wound up going up on appeal somewhere. In 2016, believing that Pushen was dead, an appeals court ordered her son and her husband to pay the damages. Which, of course, I'm sure they're like, hey, why should we pay your damages? You're right here. The following year, the employee informed the industrial tribunal that the letters to Pushen were unanswered and that she must have died. Pushen was scratched from the official records invalidating her identity card, her driving license, her bank account, her health insurance, and other official documents necessary to prove that she was, in fact, still living. As her lawyer sought this week to have her officially resurrected, Pushen accused the former employee of inventing her demise in an attempt to win damages from the heirs. The employee's lawyer counter-argued that Pushen was the author of her own demise and had played dead to avoid paying the damages accusations that she has, in fact, denied. <laughs> she said, I have no identity papers, no health insurance. I cannot prove to the banks that I am alive. I am nothing. It's time someone said, stop. If I don't fight, nobody's going to fight for me. My husband's grandmother's 102. She's lived through many things, including the war, but she says she's never suffered anything as hard as I've been through. Well, I suspect that grandma's being kind there because she's probably seen worse things than this, but it is obviously a bureaucratic nightmare. As anybody in America who's ever had to deal with Social Security Administration, or perhaps the IRS, knows that 
for instance, heaven forbid, that you get a typographical error on your social security card, it might be easier just to have your name legally changed to match the typo than it would be to actually get the Social Security Administration to change your name. But the unusual part about this is that this has apparently made its way through a court system because it mentions the 2004 Industrial Tribunal, a 2016 court hearing, and then a 2017 appellate court hearing. So several different courts have looked at this, and it appears that one court had before them somebody who said, I think this person is dead. And the court looked and said, yes, we agree, they are dead. Boom. And, and banging the gavel on that one made it official. But the interesting thing is that's not how it works in America. And I don't know if the system in France works differently or if this is how it's supposed to work. I don't know. But in America, to be declared legally dead, you would have a thing called a death certificate. And a death certificate gets issued when you've passed away. And I've studied these because I've written books where death certificates actually played a major role in something that I was writing about. Generally speaking in America, and this will vary slightly from state to state, but if you pass away, they issue a death certificate. And by they, I mean the, the government. It's usually the county, but it's overseen by the state. And they've been doing this for over 100 years in, in Michigan, for instance. And so if you die in a hospital, it's called a medically attended death Somebody was there at your bedside or showed up shortly thereafter. And they can look at you and go, yeah, we know why this person died. They passed away. They had a medical issue. That's why they're in the hospital. And a doctor can say, yes, here's why they died. Here's when they died. And here's who died. And they file a death certificate with the county. And that gets filed. The county takes it in. They process it. And then they send an official record to Lansing. There's actually a book, okay, in some places called The Return of Deaths. And it's, it's not a tax return, but the word return is being used in that setting. Because the, the, the document gets sent to the county, and the county sent, it records it and sends it off to the state. And that book is kept recording all the people who've passed away on that date in that county, often by township. If you die in a medically unattended situation, car accident or something, you die at home, someone will still have to sign off on your death. But since they weren't there, they may have to do an investigation. It's often the medical examiner's job. In the old days, that was the coroner the coroner, but the coroners were replaced by medical examiners in the last few decades. Depends on where you are. But uh, in the old days, the coroner was actually a government official who didn't necessarily even have any medical training, but they were simply there to determine what the cause of death was. And often it was simply to see whether it was a crime or not, uh, whether someone should investigate it as a crime or not. But the bizarre part about this is that somebody went into a courtroom and simply said, my opponent is not here. They're dead. And now it appears that they made the allegation that some mail was returned. But returned mail doesn't prove someone's dead. Normally, it would be a death certificate or, or the equivalent, right? So without a death certificate or equivalent, it does seem kind of strange that this woman was declared dead. But it's even stranger how much trouble she's having getting it straightened out. Most people would assume that the judge who banged the gavel saying she's dead could likewise bang the gavel saying she's not dead by simply appearing in front of that judge and saying, look, judge, here I am. I am not dead. I will swear to it under oath if you ask me to. (laughs) Do you have to ask a witness to swear under oath that they are in fact alive if they're standing in front of you speaking and they're standing upright and they appear to be doing so under their own power? It seems odd. Now, sometimes people say, you know, is there anything else possibly going on here? We can always speculate and ask ourselves, is there something going underneath the current of these facts? It's possible. It's possible that a person might not want to appear in court to argue about whether they're alive or not for fear that if they appear in court, then they'll also be asked, okay, while you're here, let's talk about this unpaid judgment. And many people would know this. But to get brought into court in the first place, they got to serve you with something. They walk up, they hit you with a summons, and they go, hey, you know, you're being sued, show up in court. Or, you know, uh, there's a warrant for your arrest, you're being arrested, hauled in front of the court. And sometimes people often hear that someone is trying to serve them, and so they dodge service. And somebody then says, oh, did you know you're being sued? It turns out the person who's trying to serve you says they served you. And so in the old days, there was a fear that if you sent an attorney into court or you went in on your own behalf and said, I never got served, the judge would go, okay, we'll throw out that summons. Here you are. Here's another summons. Boom, you're served. So they 
created this situation where you, in, you could often do this, where you have an attorney go in on your behalf to fight the service and say that, you know, just I'm here for the limited purposes of fighting the service on this. <laughs> As you can imagine, courts don't like that either. Because the judge is looking at the attorney going, okay, you, you know about the case, your client knows about the case, but you don't want to be here. <laughs> no one wants to be here. <laughs> He's got to suck it up and come in and fight the case. So I don't know if there's any possibility of any of that happening here. I don't know that. I'm just wondering why there were apparently three different courts involved in this at least. And if three different courts have looked at this case at one time or another, and one of the courts determined this woman is dead... It should be a simple matter for her to simply go in front of that same court and do this, unless there's something very, very odd about French law that I don't, I don't know about. And it, that's, that's always quite possible. <laughs> It's hard enough to pronounce these names. <laughs> so <laughs> Ms. Pouchin is very much alive, even though the French government does not think she is, or at least they've declared her not alive. And she's trying to get that straightened out. So TheGuardian.com has a story. Mark Phillips sent it to me. French woman spends three years and more trying to prove she is not dead. <laughs> Maybe she's just visiting the fjords. I hear they're lovely. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Leto's Law. I'm just one stomach flu away from my goal weight.